That's right, you guessed it. We are back at IAPA 2012. You ask the questions, they're giving the answers. Let's go. We're here at Great Coasters with Chris Gray. He is one hell of a celebrity, aren't you, dude? I don't know about all that, but I do my best. No, he is. All right, so um, Chris is going to take us on a little tour of the GCI booth. And um, I'm actually going to hand the microphone over to you, and I'm just going to let you talk away, dude. So this is now the show is belongs to Chris. Oh, perfect. Welcome to the show, guys. I think I'm the first interview, so I, I will be the first crazy face that you see for the day. So Rob is here. He's got apparently a bunch of questions for us to answer for you guys that you put on the website. And uh, we'll do that uh, the best we can. If we can answer the questions, then we, of course, will find someone we that find can. We will find somebody, yes. Yeah, so. All right, take, take it away. All right, so basically the same thing this year. We've upgraded our booth. Uh, it doesn't really mean a whole lot to you guys that are not here, but we actually added our bar for the first time ever. I've actually been trying to get us a bar for at least eight years now. So I finally got the money allocated to that. So we have a bar, a nice relaxing place to set. Take us over there. But let's go check it out. Come on over. If we go from right here, it's a sneaky position, but you can actually see Adam is the first to use the bar officially, and Joe. Uh, but we also brought some extra models that you guys might have seen at the show before. We just decided to spoof up the walls a little bit, make it look cool, because most of the time the models hang on my walls at the office, right. and it's kind of a great piece to have, so we thought it would look really great to have on the wall here at the booth. So as we go around, if you see models on the wall, they're typically things that have been at the show years gone by. Right. We just went in and brought them back again because they look so good. Let's see them. We can stop and say hello to the guys. This is Chris's show today. Chris uh, is doing the show. It's not my show, but we have Adam and Billy, Joe, Evan, and uh, of course our first meeting is in progress that we can't talk to you guys about at all. It's in that little door right there. You guys are building a 500 foot wooden coaster, right? We can't say. Oh. Sorry. Um, but right here behind Rob, we have one of the models that we brought last year, the big fun model. We're still, of course, promoting that uh, quite a bit, so it's, it's one of our favorites. We can't wait to see it get built, so hopefully you guys can help us promote it as well. How big of a, uh, a footprint do you need for that? Because we actually have some space in our house. So oh, I yeah. Know. Well, it's just smaller than a football field. Oh, we have plenty of room. Oh, so we're we'll good. Actually, we'll just tear down the local YMCA yeah, yeah. and put one of those Well, in. I mean, the community will go for do it. three more trips, and you're going to have enough money to build it Absolutely, for your whole yeah, group. So. You know, we price gouge like Yeah, yeah, it's so. great. It's great. All right. Well, we're going to walk on over and see the new model as well for the show. I hope it? this comes out. I mean, you'll edit it, right? Oh, yeah. No, no. I'm I think this would be good. You'll have all this little small talk. Yeah, no, I'm not editing any of this, dude. It's like, it's what you see. It, this is, this is gritty. in the raw. Gritty, gritty, gritty. Okay. This is one of the new concepts that we've come up with. We call it Backtrack. Uh, it basically fits on the same footprint as the Big Fun. So just slightly smaller than a football field. It's 35 feet tall. It's got 10 cars, and it goes backwards and forwards just like a normal little shuttle coaster. Uh, but again, it's 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 tamed down just a little bit for smaller children. So. Now, is, is it okay if I take a picture and tweet this to the world? Please, tweet okay. away. Here we go. This is live tweeting on our YouTube channel. Live tweeting. That's weird. I don't even have a Twitter. All right. We've taken the picture. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to tweet this while Chris talks a little bit more about this. All right, here we go. Uh, again, more models hanging on the wall. Again, those models on the wall were models that we had brought a long time ago, but we thought that would be cool to bring them back because I have never seen anybody hang a model at the wall or on a wall at IAPA, so we thought it would look cool. And Rob is taking way too long. I thought tweeting would happen in three seconds, no, not, not two like, minutes. Like, like, look, we are at the, at, at the show floor at Great Coasters, announced Backtrack, a Woody show. Hooray. Here we go, ready? Tweeted. Tweet. Done, it, we it's, have tweeted. It's tweeted. So sorry for the screams, we have Mosier beside us and they have a pretty interesting piece, so. It's the first time we've actually ever seen it run after the past three days of setup. Wow. So I was a little nervous about how much wind it was going to throw our way, but it's actually all right. So. All right, should we do questions? Questions. Let's, let's do questions. Car. All right, let's go. All right, we're, we're hey, by the way, if anyone shows up at the show, come and take a picture with the Coke car. It's set up so you can actually sort of tell that you're, think that you're riding a coaster. It, it's, it's kind of neat. It, it works. It so, good. yeah. All right. Questions. Microphone. All right, we're going to do this now. So uh, here, we'll, we'll come around so like actually Great Coasters is in the backdrop. Do you want to sit down? Nope. Okay. I'd rather not. Just don't shoot me from the waist down. Okay. <laughs> we'll have to stop. Yeah. 
I, I don't, you know, I don't know if I'm going to cut any of this. I think I'll just let it's, it go. It, well, you watch it first. Yeah, no, it'll be one of those, like, why did they bother putting all this stuff in, in the video? Oh, and, and, you know, people out there, like, we, we have wacky people. They, they, they love this right, crap. So, okay. So, we, we asked the theme park review people for questions for GCI. Now, we said that we were going to limit it to five. We actually have eight. Okay, I may or may not ask all eight, but okay. actually, no, I, I have a bonus question to ask you, too. Okay. Okay, so the first question is, with some of your competitors adding inversions and more extreme elements, do you yourself see you guys doing the same type of elements in the future? It's funny you say that. For as long as I've been with Great Coasters now, which has been over 10 years, we've always talked about doing Heartlines. That was one of Boodley's first ideas when he come up with the car is to be able to design the car so it would, could articulate very fast and very quickly to get us through a Heartline roll. Right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if, if someone come around and said, this is what we want to do, I don't think that it would be something we would shy away from. Gotcha. So, I, I mean, the cars have been ready to do it from the beginning. So hopefully someday someone will ask us to do it as well. So Millennium Flyer trains, they can do a Heartline roll if someone asks. It should be fine, yeah. All right, so parks out there watching this, GCI can do a looping Woody, so put that. Put, put that down, or an inverting Woody at least. I guess it's the same looping, thing. Right? Looping's yeah, yeah, yeah. cool too. Okay. All right, question number two. What are the reasons when deciding whether to use polyurethane wheels versus steel wheels? Oh, good, good. That's a good question. It, mostly it was because of sound issues in the city of Roost, where Europa is. Uh, it wouldn't be something that we would just throw on any coaster if we you know, had the choice. We would rather keep it steel wheels. Right. Uh, the polyurethane wheels also tend to slow the ride down a bit. That's one of the reasons Vodon is so tall and rather short, because the uh, the wheels absorb a lot of that energy. Where if it's steel on steel, it can just go, you know, another 500 to a thousand feet further. Uh, but typically, it would only be if there is a noise ordinance or a noise restriction in the city or near the park where the ride is being built. Gotcha. So is that why the Night Valley coaster just goes balls out from beginning to end? Balls out. Yeah. Yes. And it does. It goes fast. It does. So, yeah. Okay. Um, question number three. Hey, Chris, how is your first hybrid steel structure design coming along? It's actually coming along very, very well. I think we're probably going to see steel show up on site maybe in the next week or so. But it, I just got an email yesterday that steel went to the painter powder coater. Oh, great. So uh, it should start arriving via truckloads very soon. Uh, I think the, the deal now is the park is getting all the ground prep, so we'll have a place to put it all once it lands on site. And I suspect that you're going to see this ride go up very, very quickly. So once our guys hit site, there's foundation on the ground, you're going to see this ride literally shoot up cool. in, like overnight. Cool. We, we got uh, TPR spies at Fun Spot now, so when those trucks roll in, we'll be there. Um, all right. Uh, okay. Question number five or four. Do you think it's easier to design a wooden coaster or a steel coaster? Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a wooden coaster guy, so I'm going to say wood coaster. It's what I know. I'm sure there's a lot of things that are similar in the design stages of a, a steel and a wooden ride. But uh, I think the one thing that would be easier for steel is you don't have to necessarily worry about where all the supports are going. You can move things around. You can, t you know, turns and bridge things. And Or a wooden coaster, you have to really think about the artistry of how it's going to look and how it's actually going to sit on the ground and how it's going to be supported. Uh, there's a lot of things that, you know, found out years ago, you can't just put a turn and put a bridge on a turn and keep it strong for a long time. So that's why you never really see a lot of great coasters rides, if any at all, outside of Quasi that has what we call a turning bridge. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, okay. Here's my bonus question. We've been seeing a lot of tweets and Facebook posts from your interns at Knobles. Have you guys set up a satellite office there? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, the funny thing is, is I didn't get to go to Knobles as much as I normally do this year because I was traveling. But uh, the interns, Colin and Kevin, have spent a lot of time there. And they've actually taken my chair at the bumper cars for the season, which was good. I don't think they've quite friendlied up to Jack. Right. But, uh, you know, that might take a couple of years. It did for me. So, uh, but yeah, they have their own gig at Knobles. Unfortunately, Knobles is closed now. Oh, no. What do so, they do? Well, they want to hang out at the house all the time. So, oh, I don't know. Gosh. I don't have bumper cars, but we have a good TV. <laughs> That's about all there's to do in some So, we've got this weird blue light, like, on your face. Is it showing up? Yeah. Awesome. So, like, e like, there's even more lighting for awesome celebrities. So, okay. Um, okay, just a couple more questions. Um, 
So your Millennium Flyer trains, so you, you've talked about that they could go through inversions. What modifications have you guys made to them or different changes sort of since they were first born? Uh, well, of course, when we put the, or the trains on Wildcat, that was the initial changeover where we were trying to match the same weight of the competitor's car uh, because our car was a little heavier. So we dropped about 40 pounds off of each car to match that weight so we didn't have to restructure or put any new structure underneath the Wildcat the way it was. Uh, since then, there's going to be, for Fun Spot, some modifications that no one's seen before where we're actually trimming down on the seat side to make it feel a little more open to the rider. And then also Fun Spot uh, wants to use a hard foam for the seats, uh, I guess due to the Florida weather. So it might be a little easier, I think, for them to take care of. So. Any, uh, any uh, rides uh, either going to be retrofitted or even in the new stuff for the 42? What was it, the, the lower height restriction you guys did? We dropped it down to 42, but it was only on very particular rides. Uh, with, uh, we basically, the other thing we modified was the lap bar slightly uh, to accommodate smaller riders on rides that don't have a, a more extreme dynamics. So that was the Vodon, for instance, and also at Efteling, George and the Dragon. They were the, the two that first kind of accommodated a smaller rider. Okay. Anything like that coming up in the future? Or? Uh, nothing that we could talk about, of course, but you never know. Gotcha. Okay, all right, Just all right. Stay excited. Oh, we will. Um, da, 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 da. And, uh, all right, and then the, the final question, this is kind of a weird one. Um, what is the most interesting item you guys have unearthed while building a roller coaster? Oh, at Dollywood, it was, of course, there's nothing else like it. I, although you would think there would be good ones from China, but it was, I think where we built the ride in China, it was a mountainside that no one had ever touched in their, you know, the entire life of humans on the planet. <laughs> but at Dollywood, uh, the, they called it the holler. Right. So the valley holler that we built the ride in for years was known as a junkyard. I think even before Dollywood had the park. And there was two things that were unearthed. One was a truck. <laughs> and it was like, wow, it's a truck. And the next thing, like a, whole truck. Uh, like a truck. And the next thing that, that came out of the ground, we, at first it was alien. Right. It was literally a ball, a six foot round ball of rebar. And when it started to come up, it was like, what on earth is that? <laughs> and then it slowly started to come out of the ground. And then finally it had to be dug out. And I've never to this day seen anything like that in my entire life. But it literally looked like an alien artifact coming from the earth. Like wow. we were birthing it. <laughs> so. so Dollywood gets your, your top two most interesting things. I think Dollywood definitely gets it. I know when they built Gwazi, it was before my time, they were actually unearthing pipes and, and lines from the old brewery that had been there. But that was nowhere near as fun as the stuff that come out of the ground at Dollywood. No, I mean, a, a truck and an alien artifact definitely takes it, so. You can't beat it. All right, anything else you want to add, or are we good? I think we're good. I mean, we can get Joe around so he can tell all his theme park review friends hello. You want to try oh, to do that's that? that's true. Okay, yeah, like, let's we're, just, let's, say hello to Joe. Let's, let's go find Joe, because, okay, Joe really needs a date. He wants a woman. <laughs> just, I want to make that very clear, because, you know, like, you know, he wants a woman. So, let's go meet Joe and see, meet Joe. And see if we can find him a date. Okay. All right, come on, guys. All right, we're, we're walking, we're walking over here. Um, let's see, where, where is he? I don't, I don't, where, where, did, where did he go? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 I, he's, he's over here. What do you think? Okay, so we just broke him away from here at your open park for this very important question. Okay, so Joe. Microphone and yes, Rob is all and yes. Okay. So Joe, we have a question for you. We, we have just told the world on YouTube that you are looking for a woman. Oh, God. So, no, 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 this is a very serious thing. Can you just ex explain for us, you know, if, if you want to get married to a GCI engineer, tell us what kind of woman you're looking for. Like, what are you into, Joe? Oh, jeez. Come on. Like, I, this is your big chance. This is my big chance. Yeah. Well, a girl that likes live music, All right, specifically music fish. Yeah. You know, I like to travel and see fish. Uh, downhill skiing, roller coasters, of course. Um, that's about it. Dude, I mean, a chick that likes live music, skiing, and roller coasters, I mean, that sounds like a pretty exciting lifestyle. I suppose so, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, a bunch of little Joes and little whatever her name's 
is so sh should we have people? I don't want to make people email you directly, but if anybody wants Great to, Rob, yeah, Rob. send send yeah, your girl. if you're uh, send a picture of you and your cute girl resume to Rob Alvey, R O B B A L V E Y at themeparkreview.com. And Chris, you vouch for him, right? Joe's a good guy, right? Yeah, I vouch for him. It's totally cool. Yeah. So all right. All right, guys, so I think this is, uh, we're signing off from GCI, Great Coasters. Thank you again, guys, and uh, I'm sure we'll see you next year. Very good. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Chris. We'll see you guys. Thanks, Rob. Joe, I and, you know, good out. luck. No, it will. We'll find you a date. Don't worry. All right. Thank you. All right, so we're here with Corey Keeper. I mean, sorry, Keeper, right? Keeper. It's a, it's a good German name, Keeper. Got it. Uh, it's a, anyways, Corey okay. Keeper. All right. Corey Keeper, Gravity Group. Um, so there's a lot of new and exciting things happening here, and uh, I'm just going to jump right into this because one of the questions we had from our TPR readers was, uh, or as let's go, da, 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 da. will with other wooden com uh, sorry with other wooden coaster companies adding inversion, is there something? Is this something we may see from Gravity Group in the future? I, I don't know. What, what do you think? I don't know. Is, is it is it hot in here or is it just me? I you don't know, because I'm burning up with that question. And we're, we're right here with Hades, um, where, you know, we worked on Hades. It was the very first Gravity Group project, uh, our first full ride design as a Gravity Group. So it's very special, very near and dear to our heart. Um, and we worked with Nick Lascaris at uh, Big Chief. Well, it was Big Chief Big way Chief back, back when. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, now it's, of course, Mount Olympus, water and theme park. And uh, Hades was just an awesome, awesome addition for us. Uh, I mean, who gets to design a ride with a 700-foot tunnel yep. and go through it both times? And uh, so in, uh, Nick's always wanted to, to do an inversion, and even way back when at, at Custom Coasters, uh, when, when we were the engineers back there, there were discussions of, of going upside down and, and doing a corkscrew. And so, you know, this has been something that that we've looked at, that we've uh, done calculations for, investigated for just many, many years. You did a lot of calculations on this one, right? We like math. It's, it's kind of crazy. Right. We're, uh, we're math geeks. Just a little bit, though. Right. Just, just enough. But, but I mean, we're also upset. really enthused. Like, we're enthusiasts. Right. We're enthusiastic about what we do. So it, it, it's a good blend, I think. So, so on this project, who approached who? Like, who was the crazy person that had the idea and talked to the other person about it? Well, I mean, technically, it'd have to be Nick, because years and years and years ago, he, right. he wanted to go upside down. So and Nick's crazier than you guys. Well, no, Nick's not crazy. He can't, it, like, he, look, he's look a at visionary. The, look at this visionary. thing behind you. That's crazy. How no, is the man not crazy? No, it's, it's a visionary is what it is. Gotcha, I mean, like, gotcha. people, people look at, you know, people would have looked at, like, Ray Kroc and said, he's crazy to think that he can have these restaurants with, like, hamburgers all across the country. And now you go to China, you go to Scandinavia, everywhere. Um, there is a cheeseburger that you can buy for roughly a dollar. No plug. I'm not a big fan. But anyways, um, <laughs> okay. but I have eaten a, a, a couple here and there. So, so, so you're not a fan of hamburgers? No, I'm, I'm a fan of hamburgers and cheeseburgers, and I'm a fan of, like, strange fish product. So, um, but, but, yeah, so, I mean. Yeah, so who approached you with this? I mean, it, this was Nick's, Nick's idea, I mean, from the beginning. And, uh, you know, we've, we've been talking to Nick about different projects for a long time, and and this has just always been something on the on the back burner, burning, huh? Hades, uh, yeah, huh? It. All right. And so, um, the turnaround for Hades was just a, a natural place right. where where we could fit this in, and with with the Timberliner trains, we we're able to to do things that frankly we were never able to do before. Just the the amount that we're able to twist the track that the cars can handle, and uh, and so it, just the timing was right. With the Timberliners, they've got two years under their belt at Quasi and, and Grilland, and uh, and so now was the time to do it. And and Nick was he was a visionary. He uh, he was enthusiastic, and he's he had confidence in us. I mean, he had confidence in us when we did our first ride for him back in 2005. And and uh, you know I can't wait to see the result here. And you know what's awesome is uh, this this could be now that I th this is just popped into my head, this could be the first roller coaster that my kids go on that goes upside uh, yeah, down. Yeah, look at that. Huh? Their, their first, uh, and their first Woody was Twister Adrenaline, right? It was, yeah. So, but can you imagine, like, how many people in the world, the very first time they go upside down would be on a wooden roller coaster? I mean, if, if, 
The dad built. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I didn't build. I mean, not out there with the oh, hammer. Come on, you can take a little bit of credit. For no, that. we we design, but right. the, the folks that are out there in the cold winter, the cold Wisconsin winter, which is, I don't know if that's worse than the Swedish winter, but but those are the people that are the the real troopers that um, look at our drawings, decipher them, and and put things together, and uh, you know, we just work together as a team to, to deliver that quality product. Yep. But Hades, you know, I think it's going to keep everyone warm. This good, summer, good. as they're excited about that. it. Lots of puns going on about heat. I know, it's just a. Uh, Corey, you, you, you need to do like an open mic night at a, at a stand up place. I think you do all right. Well, you know, I did some improv did for you? a little while. I'm, yeah, I'm in a movie as really? well. What I did movie? a little. It's. <laughs> I don't, I don't no, necessarily. Not that we're diverting from what we're actually supposed to be talking about. No, here, it's, it's no. a B film. Uh, it was called Hitting the Nuts. Hitting it's the a, Nuts. Hitting the, it's a poker term, gotcha. I guess. I'm not a big poker player. I play a biker in a in a small small role. My right, guys, main, Netflix that. No, my main my main scene was was cut because it was so bad. Oh. But yeah. Never mind. I think I don't know. But okay. Anyways, I right. didn't I didn't quit my day job. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So I think there's there's probably like a like a burning question on everyone's might get it burning burning. Yeah. See, yeah I'm, I'm see, going going go, I'm rolling like with it right. Um, so. The Timberliner trains. This is this will be like the first big Gravity Group ride that they're on. So, like, did you guys have to make any modifications or changes from you know what you guys did at the other two parks to make these one um, go on a ride as aggressive as Hades and two go upside down? Well, um, you know, from the get go uh, in designing the Timberliners, it was our intent to design something that could do things that other wooden coaster trains couldn't do. You know, go upside down, be launched. Um, you know, go faster than any other wooden roller coaster. Yeah, I mean, we, we could have the biggest, tallest ride right. with the Timberliner. And so, really what it comes down to is, you know, like with, with the Grunewald and Twister, that was the first model year of, of the car, right? And I mean, like, I remember we had, a, I think, a Dodge Dynasty or something way back when, you know, first model year. Yeah. And I mean, frankly, I mean, it was a good car, but I mean, there, there were some small tweaks that happened in, in model year two. And, uh, We've made some small things, but it, it's not like there's major changes to the cars. Um, you know, we've we've been working with folks at TUV and uh, in the review process, and that's been really beneficial. It, it, you know, working on cars is something that's very different from working on a wooden roller coaster track. Um, completely different set of guidelines. And then when you, like in our position, like we have standards from all around the world that we have to deal with. I mean, you've got European standards. You've got American standards, you've got Chinese standards, you know, you, you, I mean, there are standards everywhere, you know? Sure. And so uh, our challenge is just understanding, translating all of the different standards and, and trying to reach like a common ground between all of them. And, and they're, that's frankly, I mean, that's a challenge. And, uh, you know, we're doing it with structure all the time, but, you know, we do it with the trains as well. And so, the uh, the trains for Hades, it's a big ride, but yep. you know he he can handle it. He's the god of the underworld. Mr. Hades after will, all. will hold up, huh? I yeah, I mean it's it's gonna be hot. Gotcha. Right. So all right, and and, and I would say another. This question is always on fire on our forums, right? No pun intended. Paula, turn the uh, volume down now. Timberliners and Voyage, what's up? Um, yeah, I mean, we're, uh, we're certainly still working with the park, and uh, we, we have some, uh, a train that we've been uh, doing many, many cycles yep. at Holiday World, and, uh, you know, we've, we're committed to that project. It was something that uh, way back when we, you know, it was like the last big project that we did with Will Cook, and, you know, we want to deliver the best possible trains that, that we can to Holiday World and, and we're working with the park and um, we just have a good cooperation going on and so we're, we're excited about getting those on the, uh, on the voyage. So. Okay, cool. All right, so uh, let's, uh, let's, let's switch things around a little bit. Now, we just came off of a China trip. We rode Fireball. Fireball, run, yeah. Fireball Wood Coaster running absolutely amazing. Um, oh my God, I just made a Hades joke, didn't I? Yeah. Fireball, oh my God. Like, look, what, see what you're doing to me? They're like, I'm not even thinking about it. Yeah. You don't have to think about it. Yeah. They just come just so naturally. All right, so, and then we, <laughs> we rode the high five. Okay, I remember seeing 
I remember seeing the concept of the high five. Remember that sketch you guys had? I think it was here. Was yeah, it last the, year or the year before? The, um, you know, our resident artist. Yep. He sketched that. You know, he 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 actually uh, worked on this as well and this. Gotcha. Can you imagine that? Hot. I mean, no. I mean, this is. Yeah, it is. He's uh, he's one hot artist. No, just kidding. So, so he's, <laughs> he's he's good. You did, you, you did good, he's, Anthony. Good good job on the high five, Anthony. I'm talking about all of your art. Yeah. So we, we saw Anthony's drawing and, and yeah, the painter guy on PBS. Did he? No, I, I don't no. know. You should watch Yo Gabba Gabba. There's a good painter on there as well. So Mark Mark Mother's ball. So anyway, um, all right. So we saw the high five drawing and we're like, there's no way. That's that's never going to work. That's absolutely insane. And we wrote it. And first it worked. And two, it was absolutely insane. We we loved it. I mean, it was crazy fun. Now my question is. I would love to see a ride like that come to America. I'm sure you guys would too. And but with some of the the you know like things that have happened at Iowa with dueling dragons no longer du dueling because they're worried about people throwing stuff. Do you think a ride like that would ever make it to the U.S.? Do you think a U.S. park would build something like that? Well, I mean, you still have a lot of racing roller coasters, uh, racing wooden roller coasters at a lot of the Cedar Fair parks um, and Six Flags. I don't see why you couldn't do something like that. I mean. Would you have to maybe put some type of safety barrier, like netting? Like, I mean, at Holiday World, they have netting at different places on the Voyage and Legend, because you have uh, like Frightful Falls and, and the Legend kind of interacting a little bit there. Sure. And I mean, you could handle that situation on a wooden roller coaster as well, if, if necessary. Cool. So, I mean, I, I think it's possible. Our approach as a company is to uh, always be creative and always look for something that can en enhance kind of the, the mood or the essence of, of that park. And, you know, I, we as, as a company, we try not to talk about elements or, uh, I mean, features. But, I mean, the high five, it is something unique to yeah, that ride. Crazy. And it, it does stand out. And, and I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. I mean, I am personally, like, I, I grew up really loving John Miller. Right. You know, like, just pure airtime. Um, no, not, not a lot of curves and twists, but it was just, you know, the, the fun, I guess I liked swing sets. Right. And, uh, and John Miller was, was kind of that guy, and I remember trying to ride a bunch of John Miller stuff when I was in college. And, and so, to, like, the high five, um, you know, like within our group, we're, we're a collaborative group of, uh, of the four engineers, and when there's a project, I, I think sometimes when I think of like a big camelback, even even I think, oh, you know, well, it, it's just a camelback. Let it be a camelback. But you know, within our group, uh, and and I mean Chad especially thought like how cool it would be. You're floating, so why can't you twist at the same time? And and you know he really pioneered the high five element. And the very first time I wrote it, like Chad and I were in Wuhan over the summer. And we got them to race. Like they don't often uh, run that ride in a racing mode together, right. but but we were able to uh, have a couple of racing rides. And when I think about my experience there, I mean it was a very hot day, and we rode that that ride. And and I mean we've had 90 degree banks on on Hades, on the Voyage has three, Ravine Flyer two, yeah. and and so we've. You know, we've, we've done a lot of the 90 degrees. And I mean, Hades yes. was, a, was the very first 90 degree bank, you know, and that, that was something new. And when I rode the high five, I mean, it was just one of those things where just immediately as, as you're going through it, you, it, it just worked. It, and it worked so well that, you know, it's just like kudos. And, and I mean, I have to admit that, you know, as a collaborative design force, I mean, uh, you know, it's important that you know, you don't win every battle and, uh, and that, that we, we give and take when we're in our office. And I mean, that's true on a lot of the rides. Sure. You know, there, there are stories. Every ride has maybe a section that, you know, had to change a little bit. Or I, I mean, I can think of like stuff on Grinnelland. I can think of stuff on Quasi. I can think of stuff on Voyage just instantaneously where we, we had discussions in our group about how, how it could be or it could be this way. And I mean, like on the Voyage, we we included Will in the, in the design process heavily, and, and we went to him and said, look, we can do this or we can do this. And, uh, and you know, he, he said, absolutely, we're doing this. And, I mean, that's, that's part of, uh, of our job and what makes it fun. And, uh, 
it, it was a great rewarding day when we were there riding the the dueling dragons and experiencing that high five and I mean it was just great airtime. I mean you're floating you're on your side and then you're you drop down the hill. So it was a huge win. So Yeah, I mean and and that's that's what we try to do. I mean we uh, there is a box that, yep. that I mean you could say, you know, a wooden roller coaster should just have high flat turns or a wooden roller coaster should just be all about these straight hops or or it should be about big fan curves or it should be about you know all these things but but really it's about trying something different it's about uh, you know we think about a ride as something that's very fluid and you know like you, you don't want to make everything the same and and so you know dueling dragons with its high five i mean it, it's it stands apart right now from from all other wooden coasters and, absolutely and i mean granted the people in, in wuhan or the people just outside Wuhan that, that travel to the park, I mean, they may not realize that there's not another ride like this somewhere else. I don't think they do. That's no, I mean, that, I, think, I, I mean, think that all rides are like this. Yeah, I mean, there, and there are people in Wuhan that uh, go to the park that maybe have never even left Wuhan. But, but I mean, to us, it's more fun for us when we do a, a custom ride. And, and uh, everything that we've ever done has, uh, has been unique and, and had its challenges. And so, you know, we're just... We're just excited about what we get to do, and, and it's, it's hard work every day. I mean, there are lots of bents. I mean, I still remember, you know, 1,060 bents on, on the voyage. When you look at Dueling Dragons, I mean, that was, if you put that together, there are more bents than there were on the voyage. And there, there's just a lot of, lot of drawings. And, and so when you get to the end of a project, you know, you, you might feel a little burned out, but, but then when, like, Chad and I were, were over there in China, and we get to see people ride the ride, see the enthusiasm of uh, some of the Chinese go up, see people that are fearful of the ride because they've never seen anything. And they have that, they have that yeah. riding position, like you know, they, they they grab hold of that bar and they never let go. Even when it's in the station, they're just like hanging on for dear life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think. That, but uh, that that's where. I mean, it's just fun to, to go and see everyone's reaction. I mean, it makes it special. And I mean, that's where, you know, like when we were in Sweden and it, the Twister was the first ride for my daughters. I mean, it, it's just, it's, it was warming to, <laughs> you know, I don't buy the pictures much of, right. uh, of kids going on, or me riding rides. But I mean, I bought the ones with my girls on it just because, I mean, that look of fear. It's a moment. I mean, it's just like my wife with this like smile and joy <laughs> and then my, my daughter with this like, Ah, what are you doing, Face? I don't know. Those are the things that, that, those are the memories that we're trying to create. And I mean, it made a memory for me, but, you know, bigger than that, I hope that it creates a memory for all these, you know, millions of people that, that come to the parks. And I mean, yeah. we, we all have stressful jobs. We all have hectic lives. And so if you can take a break from that and do something that, I mean, you can call it crazy. We call it visionary, innovative. Right. Um, when you went crazy. But when you do something like that and you give, give someone a release from the, the mundane, from the day to day, I mean, that's, that's really what the industry is all about. And I mean, you, you go around to all these booths and everyone's trying something new, something different. And you guys are making moments and, uh, and having fun. That's what we hope. Yeah, I mean, usually they're about two moments yeah. and then you're back in the station. All right, so a couple more quick questions. So, all right, so Nick's a pretty crazy guy. Can you think of what are the two? Visionary. What, what what are the the, the two Greek? We, we, we should actually yeah we should have Nick come over and all right so we uh, we just had a uh, guest celebrity come over Corey um, this is Nick Lascaris from uh, Mount Olympus we were just talking about your coaster and Corey was saying that that you're a crazy guy he said you're a visionary. no no he crazy. said no I'm crazy uh, yeah no, see no no I'm crazy so so how did this whole craziness come to be so who came to to who like well, like I think it was a dream many many years ago back uh, before 1995. Really? I told you. Yeah, see, see, you're, yeah. what, you're yeah. back checking right the, the now. I've been I've been up. trying to get these guys to do upside down wooden coaster that far back. Honest yeah. to God. It's true. And, yeah. and so finally, it's, they got enough guts. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> or I technology. Love it. I love it. <laughs> so 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 how did it actually finally happen? Like like what was the phone call that was made? Like what was the, like what was the the whole nail that oh. it happened? Well, in the industry, you see all these other wooden coasters now, like the what's the, what's the other Silver Dollar City is doing yeah. one, and then. Uh, Iron Rattler, yep. they're doing it. They're doing it with all steel, though, right. and a steel topper. What these guys did, didn't, you know, I was going to do some work on, I was on Hades up by the street, 
And so I called these guys and said, hey, we need to do a little bit of work. And we both came out of our mouths saying, why don't we just go over the top and go upside down? And we both said it at the same time. I like to say I said it first. Yeah, he, but he, he said it first. <laughs> we'll give you credit. Like, you know, you're, you're the customer. By the way, I've been actually trying to get convince Larry for a long time now that why can't we take a wooden coaster and go upside down? See, my love is wood. Good. And we have wooden go-kart tracks up in Mount Olympus. Yep. And, you know, it's just, uh, why not? So uh, I think we figured it out. Not I think, I know we have with these beautiful cars here. We couldn't do it with uh, traditional PTC cars. So they developed the cars. That was a key component. That's cool. In the past, we could never do it because of the cars. PTC are great cars, but they just, just didn't have the articulating, you know, to be able to do what we want to do here. That's so that's what has been stopping us, really, all these years. Now that these guys developed this great car, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to work. All right, Nick, we'll see you uh, this summer. Yeah, Thanks again. I hope so. Cool. Nice see you guys. Cool. Okay, so uh, we're going to wrap up with Corey. Um, oh, wait. Okay, there's one other quick thing. A lot, a lot of people probably don't know. You, you guys have another ride coming in, uh, in China, right? Well, yeah. I mean, opening soon, we got, uh, there's a ride in uh, Tianjin, yep. new Happy Valley Park, where uh, we did the design work, and Martin Vlemix is uh, the manufacturer building the ride. And so we're very excited about that. Chad and I also visited the job site this summer, cool. coming along beautifully. It's, uh, it's going to be a great ride. Design-wise, is it more like Fireball, or you know, what's, uh, what can we expect? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not a racing coaster. Um, it's, it's more of a traditional out-and-back kind of style coaster. Uh, it, it should be a good ride. I don't want to give it all away. Okay, okay, okay. Well, we'll go ride it, so we'll, yeah. we'll check it out. All right, Corey, it's always a pleasure talking to you guys. Yeah, you guys it's are so always much good to fun, see you, Rob. So. Um, we did it in America this time, not like I know, overseas. like usually we're like in Sweden or some other weird place talking. Yeah. So having uh, breakfast at the Hasselbacke. Exactly. I love that place. All right, man. Have a great rest of the show, all and right, thank uh, look you. forward to riding all of your crazy, uh, visionary ideas uh, in the coming year. Yeah, and hopefully we keep doing this for the next like 20 years or so. I all hope right? so too. All right, all right it's man. always a pleasure. Thank you. Take care. Cool. That wraps up yet another theme park review, IAPA 2012 video. We're going to have more. Stay tuned. Check out our YouTube channel.